So in this video, I want to talk about how to replace a component in Fusion 360 and also managing its dependencies. So as an example, like I have, a, I have an assembly here and it's basically a shaft with a double bearing housing here. And as you can see, so a shaft with two bearings. And what I want to do is uh, replace this bearing housing with the two bearings uh, into a single bearing housing. So the end result that I'm looking for is something like this from two bearings to one bearing. As you can see, one bearing. And then the um the tricky thing, uh the tricky thing is to like to manage its dependencies. So there are a lot of stuff in this model that um that depends on this thing that I'm about to replace. For example, there is a um there's a revolute joint that um that joins the shaft to the bearing housing. And so so then this the shaft has something depending on this bearing housing. And then and then as another example, like if we look at the the sketches of the shaft, I have a bunch of these pink lines. And these pink lines are basically are like projected lines also from this bearing assembly. So then so for example, um this pink line is saying um Let's use another example here. So for example, with this uh, 0.7 uh, dimension saying, I want the edge of these um, retaining ring grooves. I want this edge to be 0.7 millimeter away from this face on the bearing. It's not very clear here, but you get the idea. So when I delete, um, when I delete this bearing housing, um, this purple line will, will not know what its parent is. So I'm going to go through like a process of how to replace this and and I say it's a process uh, like not the process because there's just so much uh, variables so like if your model is like more complicated or like basically I'm saying like my way is not might not be the best way but I think it's it's helpful and then I've already modeled out this um, single bearing housing as you can see here and these are actually just like off the shelf parts that I look at the drawing and and model it out. So first thing I want to do is I look at like what I actually want to replace, and then I'm gonna put them in a group. Like for example, in my model, it's quite convenient because the way I model I model everything I want to replace. Um, it happens to be at the f at the start of the timeline, so I want to replace this bearing housing as well as the two bearings inside. And so I know that it's everything from here to here. And then so what I would do, I would just group them together so then it's easy to manage and you'll see later. So I think the key point in doing replacement like this is that uh, don't delete the thing you're gonna replace until you have um, until you have deal with all its dependencies so so um, just to demonstrate like if I for example if I first if, if I delete this um, delete uh, this bearing housing directly so the first thing we'll see is that some of the step has turned yellow and when we opened up the sketch uh, that the yellow line represent that it used to be a projected line but its uh, parent is gone and because if we've already deleted the parents, uh, I can't really tell like what those line was originally uh, referring to. Same thing with this plane. It used to uh, reference uh, the part I just deleted, but I can't really tell which plane is it referring to exactly. Another problem is problem is like if I undo, if you check, um, here is that revolute joint that joins the shaft to the bearing housing, and when I delete my part. When I, when I delete my part, the, the that that joint is actually gone. So, so as I'm, so the problem that is like as I put in the new single bearing housing, like for these yellow ones, I can see that this is something that I need to deal with, but when the joint is just gone, um, it's very easy for me to miss to miss it, and then, and then if I don't notice it, uh, my cost it will cause problem later on. So. So 
don't delete it right away. So first, I will um, put in the um, single bearing housing. Okay, so because of the way I modeled it, the origins, the origins already aligned, and and I can just rotate it. But this is um this is um uh specific to your own model and yeah. So I press OK. Um and then I don't want to create it at the end of the timeline because um like I could keep it here and then just add the relationship but it's 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 gonna be like I, you could make it work, but it's gonna be messy. But so it's the, um, what I try to do is just to keep the whole structure about the same. So, so, so this part that I want to replace, like before I modeled it at the start of this um timeline. So I'm also gonna move this single bearing housing to the start of the timeline. And then okay, so and and then the good thing with keeping not deleting the place you're about to replace first. It's that you can kind of see like what what you did. So I can see that I did like a ground, uh, operation here, and and it's it's like a direct reminder that I have to do the same thing for this part I'm about to replace. So I have to, and then I'll move the, I'll move the timeline. Um, to here. And then so what I do is like I just like go from the start of the timeline, and then just like work my way through or like. That doesn't have to be a start. Just whenever, whenever you, uh, whichever place you put that part in, and then just like work your way through to the right and solve like each dependency one at a time. And now I ground this component. So once I've grounded this component, then I will move my timeline a bit, and then. And then again, like this is all the stuff that I want to delete. And then so to check like what kind of dependencies do I have, I can just drag this around. Um, so for example, I can, I can I'm able to drag this to the right of this step, which is the creation of the shaft. And the reason I can do this is because the the creation of the shaft itself is not dependent on this uh, double bearing housing. But if I want to try to drag um, uh, these bearing housings, uh, this double bearing housing to the right of the sketch, I cannot because what this is telling me is that this sketch is depending on my, on whatever is in here, and the thing that's depending on it is the shaft, is the, is the sketch that I showed you just now where I have these, uh, projected lines, these projected line that is uh reference from here, so. So in this case. Um, so I know I know what's the what's what's I know what the dependency is, and then I'll go in uh, to edit that sketch, and then delete them. And then this is also a benefit of keeping the model you're about to replace uh, within the design uh, until the end, because like right now I can immediately see that this um, uh, this it's very obvious to me that this line is a reference from which part. Um, of this model, I know it's coming from this edge. Whereas if I just deleted this double bearing housing from the start, then this line will still be here, but it will be yellow, saying showing that its parents missing. But I don't have like um, what I will see is I basically I'll see. Uh, what I will see is like I'll see this with the with these line being yellow, and it becomes not very obvious to me like what what what. What is this line referencing from? And it will make it harder for me to like uh, redo these um, dependency on the new uh, single bearing housing. So right now I'm gonna delete these projected lines, and then I'm gonna create some new projected line directly from the uh, newly inserted single bearing housing. Uh, a better way to do this might be to just delete the projection relationship and then reattach that line to the newly inserted model so you don't break any relationship that depends on these projection line. Okay. Now because I've deleted those references, these have turned blue so I can move this freely around. And then I will 
project the lines that I want to um, that I want these lines to be referenced from so I know uh, one of those would be this face um, on the bearing and then also this face on the bearing okay. and then for me because this is the a retaining groove so I know this width should be should be 0.7 which is the thickness of the retaining groove and, and here I want them to be collinear these are just specific to my model and is not really important for this video and I check the sketch it's a red lock so I know everything is defined I press OK so as you can see and then my so my so my shaft has already um, went from just now sticking out from here to uh, match my new bearing housing and then as you can see if I go back to the timeline here I can now drag uh, the stuff I want to delete to the right of the sketch meaning that uh, the stuff in here is no longer dependent on the sketch and so basically I'll just repl I will continue this process of dragging this along my timeline and then see where it gets stuck and then wherever it gets stuck it means that that the next the the next item will be a dependency and I deal with that and just continue until I can I'm able to drag this to the end okay so just move my timeline a bit and then I'll continue dragging and so I can't drag past this joint and this is because this joint is a joint between the shaft and the bearing housing I want to replace so so I go deal with that I look at so so this is a as built joint and and I think like for fusion like I can't reselect for as built joint so um, I would just delete it delete it and then move my timeline back here and then recreate that joint it's an aspo joint so it's between the shaft between the shaft and the new bearing housing and then and I know it is reference from here I said like okay so now that I've done that um, um, like I recreated this joint and then this joint has no dependency on the old bearing housing so I can move this along this along and see which and then, okay so this plane has some dependency um so again like by uh, by keeping the stuff i want to replace in the design i can see like exactly what this this plane referencing to so if i go in and then i i look i know it's referencing from this face so if i hide this i know it's referencing from this face of this bearing assembly that i want to replace and so um so it's very e so so i can immediately tell that i need to uh, reselect the face and in this case it's this face and then press okay okay and then if we go back down we can see I can now drag this to the right of this reference plane and and I think I think that should be it for this model Okay, so I'm able to drag uh, the stuff I want to replace all the way to the right. It means that uh, nothing else is dependent on it. And now I can safely, I can safely delete, delete this. Delete group and its content. And yeah, from, so from that, it's like a, it's quite an organized 
way to like replace this component. Um, I think it's certainly better than just deleting the component immediately and then having everything turn red and yellow and then trying to figure out what those old references are. And by using this method of dragging what you want to delete on this timeline, it's like, um, and keeping the, the part you want to replace uh, in the model, you can see those dependencies and which just makes life easier. And so I hope this helps. Thanks.